Good morning. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, remember, our 2021 offering envelopes are in the hallway. Go through the double doors, turn to your left, and there they will be. So please take a look at those. Uh, again, for the sake of uh, uh, health, safety, only send one person back there from your family to get them. It'll just be less of a crowd around there. So please remember that as well. Christmas is coming up, and here's what we're doing for Christmas. Christmas Eve, we're going to have a 5 o'clock service, which is our normal family-oriented service, and then we have 9 and 1045. It will be the same service, uh, the 1045, we're just doing it again at 9, uh, so please remember that. And then Christmas Day, we're just doing one at 10 p.m. And we are having a, a sign-up sheet, it's going up on the thing, uh, 10 a.m., yeah. At least I know I'm in Advent this year. You know I don't really get Advent and Lynn all mixed up. Uh, please remember that. Uh, starting tomorrow, there will be a sign-up sheet on the website like we do normally have. Uh, we are having the sign-up sheet limited at 150 for those services, which is why we added the extra service uh, where we did. Uh, so we can accommodate a few more, uh, but not overcrowd this and, and still keep things safe. Uh, again, I see most of you are wearing your masks. Thank you. This is important. Um, we want to slow the spread. Nothing stops the spread. We know that. But we're slowing the spread. And truthfully, uh, the Christian church bears enough brunt of criticism in this day because of our beliefs about sin and, and, and exclusivity of Christ for salvation, that he alone is the way to salvation and being with God. Um, we do not need to lift our churches up to mockery uh, and have... COVID spread through here. So please do be careful with those things. Right now, wave and greet one another. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son.
Christ, O oh God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, o Christ, King who comes to save us. Behold, the Lord comes to save us. fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. <laughs> then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. <laughs> Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of all the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring of the Lord that the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And a reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. St. Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
reading from John chapter 1, and we read together. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. This is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the straps of sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. Dear friends, Today is the third Sunday in Advent, and it has a special name. In Latin, it's called Gaudete, which means rejoice. Gaudete, rejoice. Today is Joy Sunday, and we mark it with the pink candle. In some churches, the whole room goes pink. Pastors have pink stoles and pink pyramids and pink banners, everything pink, to mark our joy that Jesus, our Savior, is coming. You know, Advent is a time of fasting. It's a time of repentance. But this Sunday reminds us that we can have joy in the midst of those things. We can have joy even while confessing sins because our Jesus comes to take away sins. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And if Jesus is coming to take away sins, let's get them all out in the open. If he's coming to take them away, here, Jesus, here, you can have them all. Therefore, Advent is a time both of repentance and joy. In our epistle this morning, St. Paul writes, Rejoice always. And when life is good, that seems like a nice sentiment. However, when life is bad, this command can seem burdensome. Rejoice always? Pastor, do you know what I'm going through? Even during a time of COVID and isolation and loneliness, even when I'm filled with anxiety and depression, even when my kids are driving me crazy, 
Pastor, I have aches and pains. I have grief and sorrow. Rejoice always. Ugh, I don't think I can. But friend, this is a misunderstanding of joy, a joy in the Lord. For a joy in the Lord is not the same thing as mere happiness in life's circumstances. Now certainly the words joy and happiness could be used interchangeably. But most often Christians have made a distinction between the joy of the Lord and the happiness of life. When we say happiness, we're talking about something temporary. Happiness is something tied only to the present, to circumstances. It is very fleeting. But joy is deeper. Joy is eternal. First, let's discuss happiness. Happiness is that thing you feel when good things happen. So you eat a good meal, (laughs) happy. You're hungry again, sad. You get a new job, that's happy. You lose the job, that's sad. Or when someone is born, that's happy. And when someone dies, it's sad. Happiness and sadness are tied to the events of life. And no matter who you are, you're going to experience both. Consider this. Jesus was often sad. Do you realize that? Like when Lazarus died, the Bible says Jesus wept. Jesus was often frustrated and weary. Isaiah calls him a man of sorrows, a man well acquainted with grief. For when sin, death, and devil do their worst, it would be inappropriate to be happy. Those occasions call for sadness. So we are not commanded to always be happy. Happiness is a blessing, but it's not an always thing, and it will be short-lived. Joy is different. Joy in the Lord is not a temporary thing. It's an eternal thing. It's eternal because it's based on eternal things, God's eternal promises. Or said better yet, joy is based on the one who died for our sins and is now alive forevermore. He is risen. He lives. And as long as he lives, joy lives. Joy looks beyond the circumstance. It sees the big picture, specifically the end of the story. Joy is found in the hope of the resurrection. That after all the grief and sorrows of this life, God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. And we have this joy in the present as we anticipate the coming of Christ. So then, joy in the Lord is something deeper. It's something more permanent than either happiness or sorrow. For joy is constant throughout all the ups and downs. And not only can joy coexist with various feelings like sorrow, but consider this. Sometimes joy grows because of sorrow. The bad things get us excited for eternity as we yearn for a new heavens and a new earth. As Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, and they shall be comforted. So then, sorrow does not remove our joy. In a strange way, sorrow feeds our joy. For God promises us eternal life in Jesus Christ. And the sorrow that we experience now will only heighten the joy when Christ reappears. The dark days will only make his light seem brighter. And the enemy's efforts will only make the victory sweeter when Jesus crushes the devil's head and places death under his feet. I think we should also consider 
the author of the words rejoice always. Those words were written by St. Paul, a man who truly had some horrible days. Paul was often imprisoned. He was often beaten with rods and flogged. He was once stoned, and he lived to tell about it, shipwrecked multiple times, often cold and naked and hungry, in constant danger. He had constant anxiety. Indeed, he says at one point, he was so burdened beyond what he could bear that he despaired of life itself. And it's this man who writes, rejoice always. You see, circumstances can rob us of happiness, but the joy of the Lord remains. Yes, even when all happiness is taken from us, we still have the joy of knowing Jesus, of knowing that God has become man, that he has taken our sins upon himself. And because of him, we will live forever. Christians are not always happy, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't be. We are often brokenhearted. But notice what Isaiah says in the text about the brokenhearted. He says that Christ comes to bind up the brokenhearted. He comes to comfort those who mourn. Therefore, he says, I will rejoice in the Lord, and my soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. And there, in that robe of righteousness, we find the greatest joy, that our sins are forgiven. What would be the saddest thing imaginable? What's the saddest thing you can imagine? For me, it would be to be rejected by God. The saddest thing imaginable would be to arrive at the judgment and to have all my sins exposed for all to see. What would be worse than that? Than for all to know my many faults and then to be humiliated and rejected. Whether we know it or not, that is the greatest fear. But I rejoice, for he has covered me with the robe of Christ's righteousness. My sins are covered. He's washed them away. And if I've been washed and clothed with Jesus, I know that I'm pleasing to God, that he will accept me, and he'll welcome me as his child into his kingdom. Yes, having been forgiven, having been washed and clothed and adopted, I will now hear the sweet words, you are my child whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Is there anything better than that? Friends, this is our joy. Knowing that the Father loves us, and that he doesn't hold our sins against us. If God were to list our sins, we would all die in shame. If he condemned, there'd be nothing to live for. But if he loves us, and if he's covered us with the robe of Christ's righteousness, there is now no condemnation, and we can have unending joy in anticipation of that day. So then, Christians have ups and downs like everyone else. But what's different is we have the joy of knowing the forgiveness of Christ. We have repentant joy. And we grieve, but not like others do who have no hope. For we have hope in the midst of the grief. We have joy in the midst of many sorrows. We have a peace that transcends understanding. For Christ is risen, and we are forgiven, and we are welcomed into the family of God forever. We are loved. If God were our enemy, this joy would be impossible. 
But now that he has declared us his friends, to not have joy is impossible. If God is for me, who can stand against me? It is God who justifies me. Who is left to condemn? Brothers and sisters, this is our joy, that he welcomes us and he will not condemn us, and nothing can take that away. Yes, life may be sad. It may be horribly sad. Sometimes we are burdened beyond what we can bear. But in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor the things to come, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God found in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the year 2020 is another year to be joyful Another year to give thanks, for we belong to the Father, and we are now even closer to eternity. And this season of Advent, this is a season for joy, for both repentance and joy. For the Father loves you, and the Son comes to take away your sins. May the God of all comfort fill you with joy. And may he bring you to that day when the, sor- when the sorrows will cease. He is faithful. He will surely do it. Amen. We now stand. may be seated and we worship the Lord with our offerings.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray, O Heavenly Father, that you would grant us your spirit that by your mercies we might have joy always, that in the midst of the good things of life we might look to you and give you thanks. In the midst of the, the struggles of this life, we might remember that our joy is based in the forgiveness of sins and that nothing can separate us from your love that comes in Jesus Christ. We pray that this joy might take deep root, that our world may see it in times of distress, and that they might marvel and wonder for the reason of the hope and joy that lies within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the mission and the ministry of this congregation, that you would watch over us and guide us and lead us. Let us not take our eyes off the cross of Christ, and let that ever be the praise of our lips and and our hearts, that as we live together in church and in school, we might point all to the love that comes alone in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the family that you have gathered in this place. We thank you for, especially this week, Doris Kempf, Karen Kennedy, the Tim Kennedy family, Cheryl Keyes family, and the King Schmidt family. Grant that they may know your grace, receive your love in Christ Jesus, and rejoice in all of your mercies. Be with our persecuted brothers and sisters throughout the world, that they may cling to the promises you have given them in times of hardship, and being filled with joy, they may meet all challenges that come, knowing that the crown of eternal life awaits them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the many gifts of this life. Especially we give you thanks for the gift of life that is given. We rejoice with the Weiss family at the birth of their little girl, Hope Anastasia. We pray that you keep her and her family together and safe in the true faith until the day of Hope's baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, those who are hospitalized, We pray for Fred and Roy. We pray for uh, Jim Pompel as he undergoes surgery. We we pray for those we know and we name in our hearts. Most of all, we also pray for those who struggle at this time of the year with sadness and sorrow. We pray for those with mental illness. We pray that you might bring peace to all, that they might see the gracious gifts of your son Jesus and rejoice in him and his gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our nation, that you would grant that finally healing to take place where wrongs have been done. Let those who have done wrong to another ask for their forgiveness and seek your forgiveness in Christ Jesus. And let there be repentance that shows forth in fruits of faith that works to right to those things. Grant our president and our president-elect wisdom and understanding for the days ahead. Grant to our state governor, governor and all those in positions to rule and enforce the laws that you would watch over them and keep them safe and that they too would have wisdom and seek justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the first responders and for those in medicine and all those who are are there to help in times of our need. 
We pray that you'd give them clear minds and understanding, that you'd protect them in times of danger, and that they'd be wise in times of stress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would remove COVID from among us and in this world. We indeed see much suffering because of it. We see much trouble caused by it. We pray that this creation that you have made will come to you repentantly, praying for your mercy, and that you would indeed remove what has come, that by your grace we may rejoice again as we gather together openly and freely to praise your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the city of Detroit and those of us in her suburbs that you might grant an abundance of jobs for those who are looking for those jobs, that you provide workers that are capable and, and trained for those positions that are open and having difficulties, that most of all, you can provide for those who are in need and that there can might be peace in our midst as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to the God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.